It's not Al anymore. It's Duck. Chicks Big Gay Guys 2014 by Nathan Anderson. Don't mind if I do. What's my name? Chicks Dig Gay Guys. It's a whole new game. Chicks Dig Gay Guys. Chicks Dig Gay Guys is a 2014 romantic comedy written and starring Nathan Anderson. Going into this film, I assumed it would be something akin to The Hangover, which basically started a genre of cheap knockoff films. And I can see why rent a hotel room with your friends, get drunk, and say overtly offensive things in the name of comedy is an appealing genre to work in. However, that isn't what this film is. Kind of. This is more of a Happy Madison ripoff, so they say overtly offensive things in the name of comedy, but rather than doing this for edgy humor, it's in service of a flimsy at best love plot between two dimensional characters. That basically says there's a point and a sentiment to this movie, except there really isn't. I, I should probably put it in your ass. You know, since that's what I'm used to. I'm sorry. Of course. Uh, right? I don't know why I didn't think of that. We're yeah. so inconsiderate. Uh, oh, totally. And while it's hard to look past the two-dimensional traits and crude humor of an Adam Sandler film, this film takes it a step further as these people can't act at all, have no name recognition, and Nathan Anderson can't write coherent or funny jokes to save his life. This film feels as exploitative as its tagline, straight man, gay plan, true story. This film feels more like a vessel for the writer and second lead actor Scooter to touch boobs and kiss strippers. Look, I don't mind crude humor as long as it has something to say and leads back to the plot in a mature way. Did this film do that? Um, well no, but I'll have my friend Grant explain. You know how I get, sometimes the wolf comes out. Hey, I'm Grant the Hierophant. <sighs> Connor has asked me to talk about the representation of uh gay people in this movie um so we watch chicks dig gay guys and let me tell you i think it was probably one of the unfunniest movies i've ever seen connor has asked me to talk about this movie because i am part of the lgbtq plus community and uh he wanted to see what i thought of the movie and its representation of the gay folks the whole plot of this movie is basically that two straight guys pretend to be gay to try and get chicks. One's in it for the sex, he just wants to meet new women and fuck them. And then the other guy wants to find, like, love and a partner, and that's basically the whole movie right there. They pretend to be gay and try to meet women through that. The one who wants sex basically does it just so he can get closer to women. And then the one who wants love does it because he meets a girl that he really likes and wants to be with. Obviously, it doesn't go very well. I just need to explain. Fuck you, shit, shit. You're about to get the wolf. When it comes to representing what gay people are like, uh, this movie is not all that correct, would you guess? Uh, basically, these two guys pretend to be gay to try and get chicks and try to act gay, and the way they try to act gay is kind of not really offensive as much as it is kind of stupid. She is so adorable. <laughs> He's so funny. I, I swear. Basically, one guy is always putting on the gay voice. He's like, oh, you know, I, I love Ch I love dick. It's so great. I just love it. Oh, they were just stalking me on the dance floor. Well, you're really hot. And the other guy always puts his hand up with a, like, limp wrist, and it's really stupid. <laughs> All right, so your shot or mine? Um, I think it's my turn. Okay. Is it your turn? No, ladies first. Okay. And he tries to do the gay voice too, and it's kind of offensive and stupid, but what can you do? Um, <laughs> there's also another character that is actually gay, and he's probably one of the more offensive characters. And this gay guy tries to sleep with a straight guy because the straight guy's pretending to be gay. And there's this whole awkward scene in a tent where the gay guy is trying to sleep with him and he's pulling out like sex toys and shit and it's really awkward. Other than that, I'd say the representation is pretty terrible all around because they're just basically putting on stereotypes. The few actually gay characters in this movie are just kind of stupidly stereotypical too though so i don't know what to say really hello little gay boy yes hello what are you a dog in heat get lost come stay and i get that the joke is that they think that gay people act a certain way but then you have this character that is gay in the script and he is acting like a complete well 
Who's ready for camping? Manly men say yes! Oh. It's supposed to be a raunchy comedy. It only got me to laugh once, and that was because it caught me completely off guard. Hey, when's the last time you spoke to your father? They say the F word a few times, like three times during the whole movie. I knew fags were afraid of heights. Yes. Boom. The representation of gay people in this movie is kind of terrible in so many ways. What I mean by this is that the character who is actually gay is kind of a complete stereotype, you know, and not funny. I get that it's supposed to be a raunchy comedy, so I'm not going to take it like at face value. I'm not going to really dig into it for its offensive representation because that's probably supposed to be the joke. All right, Lizzie, you ride with the new homos. Let's roll! But the fact that the only gay character tries to basically rape another man is kind of not great. Not a good, not a good thing to put in your movie. Besides that, I guess the only thing I can say that offended me was the fact that this whole movie's just not funny. The jokes don't land and the whole play on pretending to be gay so you can get chicks is kind of stupid in so many ways. For one, if they think you're gay, they're not gonna sleep with you. And for two, one of the guys pretending to be gay actually does get laid from pretending, and it's really unrealistic. I think the thing that probably offended me the most was how much they lay into the stereotypes, but even then, I'm not really offended by it. So trying to dig into this movie to find a deeper meaning is kind of pointless and stupid and you shouldn't do it. <laughs> you're either gonna love this movie and laugh at it hysterically or you're gonna absolutely hate it and think it's the most boring thing ever. I mean the plot is boilerplate at best and generic at worst. If I could suggest a way to make this film better, I'd have to say just don't make it. But, I mean, if it's already too late and you're already in production, your best bet is going to be laying into the gay stereotypes a bit more and making it kind of obvious that the straight people are, you know, playing into stereotypes. And then take your gay characters that are actually gay and tone it down a bit. <laughs> it would be a lot funnier if you just had a normal gay guy who was just acting normal and, like, immediately figured out that these two straight men were pretending to be gay. That would have been funnier, honestly. In conclusion, I'd have to say that I'm not really offended by this as a bisexual man. I mean, they're playing into stereotypes, but it's not clear whether or not this is intentional. So I'd have to say, in the end, I don't really care about this movie. It's not really any watershed moment in my life watching this. It's just another shitty, raunchy comedy and uh, should be treated as such. Thanks for listening. Uh, once again, I'm Grant the Hierophant. I run a YouTube channel. And uh, thanks for having me on, Connor. Wow, Grant. Thanks for being such a good friend and adding so much to my video. Anyways, let's get back to talking about the characters in this movie. You know how I get. Sometimes the wolf comes out. This movie has a fairly concise cast and most of the characters actually have stuff to do. However, it's worth noting two-dimensional and half-baked will be the main theme of our characters this week. Scott is our main antagonist, I suppose. He's a douchey jock who's dating our main love interest, Rachel. He's essentially the embodiment of the douchey jock archetype, and honestly, up till the last 10 minutes of this movie, while he's kind of an asshole, he really doesn't do anything too bad that should make Rachel not like him. I mean, Rachel was dating him in the first place. They lived together and were planning on moving out of state together at the end of the film. And while yes, he's a two-dimensional douchebag, the film doesn't show Rachel grow past him, so it doesn't really make any sense why we're supposed to have them break up. However, in the last five minutes of this film, it's revealed that he hid a college acceptance letter that she could have used to go to art school. This plot point was literally made up at that very moment to give Rachel a reason to pick our main character over Scott. And I guess Brad supports her art, even though he's a liar who pretends to be gay to sleep with her. Regardless, they also make a thinly veiled attempt to get the audience to hate Scott by having him announce at the bar that he cheated on Rachel. So Rachel's, uh, gonna kill your game with the bitches out there, bro. Yeah, but I still get to fool around on business trips. But, again, the film never brings us up again, and Rachel seemingly never finds out. So I guess that was just for the audience to know and hate Scott more, I guess? The reason I started with Scott is because him being underdeveloped is the first major hit on the thesis of this film. We know we're supposed to hate this guy, we know he's an unlikable ass, but for three-fourths of the film we don't know why Brad's a better option for her, as he is seemingly a lying scumbag as well. And I don't think they properly established later why Brad would be a better option for her than Scott. 
Brad is a lying scumbag like every other character in this film. He's certainly the least scummy of the bunch, being hesitant to lie to have sex, but ultimately comes around to the idea until he falls in love with Rachel and decides he doesn't want to lie anymore. Brad comes off as a huge Gary Stew in a lot of ways too. This is clearly because he's the self-insert of Nathan Anderson, the writer and co-star of this film. You see, Nathan wanted to be a scumbag who got to touch girls' breasts, so he wrote himself in as Scooter, but this film says it's based on the life of Nathan Anderson, so presumably Brad is Nathan's insert. It's pretty confusing. Anyhow, as I said, he's a massive Gary Stew. He gets the girl at the end because he's honest about not actually being gay, and Rachel is fed up with liars. Okay, but why would she leave one liar, Scott, for another liar, Brad, who lied to trick her into having sex with him? It makes no sense. She literally breaks up with Scott and runs for the equally douchey Brad in the same scene. It makes no sense at all, and it isn't a great way to start a relationship, but since Brad is the self-insert, it all works out for him. Hence, Gary Stu. But this isn't the only Gary Stu moment. A few scenes after Rachel figures out he's not gay, Brad has rebound sex with some random girl that comes out of nowhere, and we're told that it's his ex-girlfriend. But it's okay and not scummy at all because he got whiskey dick, and since there's no penetration, it wasn't real sex? So no penetration, no foul, I guess. No. No, 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 wait, wait, Kelly. Kelly, what do you mean we didn't have sex? Oh. What do you mean? Like, fuck some rusty trumpet. Oh. Kelly. Hang on. Oh. Kelly. Just for clarification purposes, for me, really. What? So we didn't do anything last night? There was definitely no penetration. Finally, the ultimate Gary Stu moment is where he gets pulled off of a big presentation at work for fighting Scooter during the rehearsal, but love or something gives him the confidence to barge into the meeting at his work and make a big speech that is so good he gets a promotion and gets his boss fired. There, there's, a, there's a gentleness and a love and a passion. Brad! Yeah? Why do you say you come to New York with me and we'll discuss this campaign in depth? New York? Really? Um, but what about Scooter? Because he and I, we're like a, a team. Scooter's coming too. What? Oh, right. Yeah. Shit, yeah. Like, this basically comes out of nowhere. His boss seems like a normal boss earlier in the film. Not an asshole at all, really. This is long overdue. You're fired. <laughs> oh, he did. Security. Oh. You don't need to call security. I'll leave. But you're going to hear from my lawyer. And yet, at the end of the film, he gets his comeuppance like he did something wrong. And the speech he made was just a bunch of bullshit and at best wouldn't even do anything for the company. The speech doesn't even relate to the theme of this movie. It's not like he learned an important lesson. He just talks about how working at the company's hard work or something? This whole moment just happens without any setup. Anyhow, the long story short, Brad is also an unlikable asshole. Scooter is basically the sidekick best friend, or possibly brother or cousin to Brad. They share the same grandma, I think. I don't know, it's pretty unclear throughout the film. You gotta be careful with that sexual harassment shit. Fuck that. It's not important. Friday is. It's my cousin Tiffany's 21st birthday. Do you have any idea how many hot young bitches are gonna be there? Man, which could be a real bitch to get rid of. Okay, okay, discretion please, Grandma. He's an asshole that comes up with a gay plan because he can't get laid. This leads to him getting tons of women because he fakes being gay, and this leads to awkward, unfunny scenes of him making out with topless women he wrote into the movie because he's an unfunny, horny pervert. He also gets a girlfriend at the end, Rachel's best friend, who is some unremarkable woman with no character traits who's kinda just there so that Scooter also gets a girlfriend at the end. He also demands she give him head often for the relationship to work out. It's about commitment. Okay, just say what you gotta say. I need to get my dick sucked a lot. What a likable and funny character moment. Here's my tip for up and coming film writers and directors. If you're gonna make a film based on your life and write a side character who's an unfunny asshole who uses gay stereotypes to get laid and touch boobies, it may be worth not doing that because it makes anyone who's watching your film see you're just a pathetic fucking loser no one should take seriously. This is probably why his production company, The Nathan Company, never made another film. Rachel is our main love interest. She's an artist who has a lot of gay friends. That's literally her entire character trait. Otherwise, she's no more than an object for this movie to push the plot. We never see her struggle with the idea of her boyfriend being an asshole, or Brad tricking her to try to have sex with her. In fact, her whole personality in this film revolves around having a boyfriend. That is why at the end of this film, she leaves Scott for Brad. She realizes Brad is less of an asshole from the information she has, and the five minutes they spend together on their camping trip, so she ends up dating him. She isn't a real character, just a goal, and honestly, I think most women who realized, oh shit, my boyfriend's a lying asshole, wouldn't run away to literally date another guy who turns out is also a lying asshole.
It's a pretty depressingly weak character. None of the other characters are really noteworthy, but there is a cameo from Eric Roberts. You probably don't know who he is, but he's in over 500 movies, including The Dark Knight. That this man, Salvatore Moroni, is the new head of the Falcone crime family. Moroni? He's a fall guy. He shows up in this movie and has sex with a girl, then it's never seen again. I have no idea why he took this role, but I assume he's just one of those actors you hire by the minute, and he's legitimate enough that people will recognize him and say, oh hey, it's that guy, and then they'll think this is a real film with real actors. You know how I get, sometimes the wolf comes out. The tone of this movie is pretty odd, as it seems like it should have been a raunchy sex comedy for the first act, which while exploitative and cheap is at least something and would make this movie get more of a pass from me, but then it changes into a boring movie where nothing happens in the second act except they camp and walk around in circles, and then in the third act it turns into a sentimental romantic comedy. This movie just needs to pick a tone and stick with it, but it opts out of that and instead is just an unfunny, boring mess of a film that honestly gives off disgusting, sex-obsessed vibes while also trying to work in an angle of genuine romance and it doesn't fucking work at all. You know how I get, sometimes the wolf comes out. Don't make Happy Madison ripoffs because they don't work. Pick a tone and stick with it. Don't use lens flare or Dutch angles. If you want to touch girls boobs so bad, treat them like human beings and you won't have to pay a couple million dollars to do so because everyone will see through it and you'll just look like a pathetic loser who comes out the other end with a flop no one watched and an empty loneliness in your heart. And finally, if you want to make a clever movie challenging gay stereotypes, or stereotypes in general, you can lean into the stereotypes, but you need a counterbalance so you don't come off as a homophobic asshole. So would I recommend Chicks Dig Gay Guys? No, it's most likely the worst film I've seen in my life, when considering all factors, and its writing is so horrendous that I think even Happy Madison's worst films easily blow it out of the water just on virtue of writing alone. Anyhow, that's all for this week. I don't know what I'm going to do next week yet, but I think I may try to do a video on an actual good film. That'd be a nice change. As always, comment and subscribe. I would also like to give a big shout out again to my good friend Grant for coming on this week. Check out his channel as we work together often. So if you liked having him on, great, because I'm sure he'll show up again in this series pretty soon.